Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can find the equation of a parabola when given only its focus and directrix. An important tool you're going to need for this is the distance formula right here, where d is defined as the distance between two points. So don't forget that. Now, looking at this example, I say write the equation of a parabola defined by the focus at 0, comma 2 and the directrix at y equals negative 2. So let's just graph that real quick to get a visualization of what's going on. So there's my focus at 0, comma 2, and my directrix is at negative 2 through the y-axis, y equals negative 2, right there. The geometric definition of a parabola states that every point on the parabola must be equidistant from a point called the focus and a line called the directrix. So very quickly and easily we can locate the origin, 0, 0 is halfway between the focus and the directrix. I'm going to make a quick sketch of a parabola here. A little cut off on the left, but you get the idea. Again, the geometric definition says that if I take some random point, let's call it P with the coordinates general X comma Y, this must be equidistant between the focus, this distance must be the same as to the directrix. So those distances are the same. Now, I'm going to give directrix a more specific set of coordinates. It's lined up with the point P on this vertical line, so it's going to have the same value of x. Also, we know that the directrix is at along the line y equals negative 2, so the y coordinate is negative 2. So that's the best I can do with the directrix coordinates. And because of the definition of the parabola, using the geometric definition, any point is the same between the focus and the directrix. So again, P to F must equal P to D. Those distances are the same. So I'm going to use this as my basic tool to set up my distance formulas to solve for the equation of my parabola. So I'm going to set up two distance formulas, and here's my square roots. And that's going to be equal to the square root between P to D. And let's see, P to F. So my X1, Y1 on both the left and the right side will be this point X comma Y, the general point. On the left side, P to F, 0 comma 2 will be my X2, Y2. So let's go ahead and plug that in. In my formula for the distance, the square root of X minus x1 minus x2, so that's going to be x minus 0, quantity squared, plus y1 minus y2, that's going to be y minus 2 squared. Now that should be equal to the distance between the point and the directrix. So here, again, for x1, y1, we're using the point p, x comma y. And in this time, though, x2, y2 will be the directrix coordinates at x and negative 2. So plugging everything in, I get that x minus x squared plus y minus a negative 2. Minus a negative just means plus 2 quantity squared. Those are the setup for my equation between the focus and the point and the directrix and the point. Now we need to simplify. So notice that we have a big square root over both. No, that does not mean you can just simplify the little squares in between underneath, but if I did put one big square on top of both, that cancels out the square root both ways, uh, on both sides. So I can do that as my first step and as long as I'm squaring both sides, it just deletes that square root from the uh, problem. And I'm just dealing with what's underneath the square root. So it's much simpler looking now. Uh, looking underneath the square root, I have x minus 0 squared. That just simplifies to x squared. And I also have a y minus 2 squared. 
I'm going to deal with that in just a second. On the right side, x minus x, that's just 0 with a squared on the outside, plus y plus 2 squared. All right, now let's look at this guy right here. This y minus 2 quantity squared does not mean I can just say y squared and then minus 2 squared. No, I have to think about FOIL this. That means I have a y minus 2 times another y minus 2. If you go through and you FOIL everything, you're going to end up seeing that you get y minus 2y minus another 2y minus, or actually a plus 4. And then that means that y squared minus 4y plus 4 is what that expression simplifies to. So x squared plus y squared minus 4y plus 4 is equal to 0 squared. Well, that's just 0. Uh, so I'm not even going to write that. And then I would have to expand this y plus 2 quantity squared. Using my fast foiling skills, I get that y squared plus 4y plus 4 is the solution to that particular binomial squared. Okay, now it's time to start moving numbers on both the left and the right side to simplify. Notice that, first of all, I have a y squared, a positive y squared on both sides. So if I do minus y squared on that side and minus y squared on this side, they both go away. All right? I also have a positive 4 on both sides, so I can subtract 4 from both the left and the right. And those go away. So let's see what's left. I have an x squared. I have a minus 4y. And I have that's equal to positive 4y. Adding 4y to both sides, I get that x squared is equal to 8y. And now I can divide both sides by 8. And I get that y is equal to x squared over 8. But I want to look make it look a little prettier. And I'm going to write it as y equals 1 eighth x squared. So it's very clear that the a value in my general equation of a quadratic function is 1 eighth. And that is how you find the equation of a parabola when given only its focus and directrix. So just remember that the key things are to use this general point of x comma y and then to set up your equation using the geometric definition of a parabola. So that point, p to f, must be equal to p to d. Now it's your turn. Find the equation of a parabola given the focus at 0, 3 and directrix at negative 3. Good luck.